So I want to talk a bit about what's going on with Asahi Linux and the work that Lena has been doing. So I was going to say, hey, uh, Lena has managed to get this, uh, this cube rendering. I'll show you the cube. She managed to get this cube rendering and it like rotated and, you know, it's, it's a cube. She managed to get a cube rendering with her completely open source driver for the M1 GPU. And that's where I was going to I was going to say is like hey look it's crazy look at the work she's done. Um but this is Lena we're talking about. So she worked really fucking hard and before I before I recorded this she's uh, already done way more. <laughs> so the other thing that I was going to mention is that she initially got KDE loading with a black screen. So you've got the KDE logo loading, you got this down here, and it like boots KDE. It didn't work, it instantly crashed, but it booted, which was so much better than anything she'd done. And then, um, once again, because it's 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 Lena, uh literally the following day, she booted full GNOME, and GNOME just works. <laughs> and not just like booting into GNOME and GNOME works. She can go on YouTube and like it it does hardware encoding on like hard a uh, hardware decoding on YouTube. It's like and like Inochi 2D runs. And not not just like just Inochi 2D, but all of this other stuff running in the background as well. Like what the hell is going on? I remember a couple of months back, back like, during the uh, no a year ago actually. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was even longer. Back when um Back when the uh, M1 GPU project and the Asahi Linux was first being discussed. When did I do my first video on Asahi Linux? Brody Robertson, Asahi Linux. When was it? Seven months ago? Wait, over a year ago. Over, okay. Uh, a year ago, I did this video. So, April 15th, 2021. Since... Shut the fuck up, Brody. Um, I did this video. So, this was a long-ass time ago. And since then, that is not even, like, it's not even that long ago, actually. Like, I say a long-ass time ago, but it was, like, a fucking 17 months ago. You went from... Booting the kernel and pretty much nothing else, like some basic stuff there. I think the bootloader was working, like it was actually the proper bootloader at that point, the uh, M1N1, but they might not have just, it might not have been even M1N1 at that point. It might have just been like a very alpha version of that. You went from nothing to GNO in 17 months with a GPU that has no documentation. You had to reverse engineer it and bring it to this point where, like, it's actually functional. It like from my understanding, the the current implementation for the the GPU and getting this actually working is like a lot of. Uh, Lena said it has a lot of hacky codes, uh, a, a lot of hacky code in it, and it's like a lot of code that's not necessary and it's not clean or anything. It just it works. But it's not optimal. Like, it's not going to be the fastest it's going to be. It's not going to be the most stable, anything like that. But the fact that it works, the fact that it works is the impressive part. And the fact that once we once we got to the point where we had basic GPU encoding, we've gone so far past that. Like, I, I have no idea, like, no understanding about how this GPU reverse engineering would, go, uh, would be working. What I can I, I I do know though is it looks seriously impressive to the user when you go from nothing functioning with the GPU to a full desktop functioning with the GPU. Now it is also Wayland. I don't believe Xorg is something at all being worked on, which makes sense. You know, Wayland is kind of the future, and also it presumably is easier considering it's like not Xorg. <laughs> it's not this ancient code base, um, and mono, like, not mono, like, mega code base that, uh, you would have to support. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's, there's maybe some other reason for that. I don't know. 
either way, Wayland on Gnome works now, which is crazy. So I don't know where we go from here. I, I really don't. Like, I I'm guessing maybe, maybe it gets to the point where you're getting, like, 3D rendering, like, fast 3D, but I don't know, you probably already do that with, uh, with Blender. Like, I, I, I genuinely don't know what the next step is here. I'm guessing it's some, probably, like, stability and cleanup, that, that would be what I guess, but regardless, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, like, <laughs> it's just crazy what's going on, and I am, I don't have any interest in owning an M1 Mac, but I'm very happy that this project is going well. Because now you can buy an M1 Mac and you could legitimately use Linux on it. Like, it's still very early stages. Like, this is still very alpha, very beta software, whatever you want to call it. But it's probably at most a year away from being maybe not production ready, but like ready to the point where you could do it reasonably if you wanted to, which is crazy. Like, absolutely crazy. I, I got so many initial comments being like, this is a stupid project. Why would you ever do this? No one would have run Linux on an M1 Mac. This is impossible. Uh, GPU, writing a GPU driver just can't be done because there's no documentation. It's going to, without Apple supporting it, it's just never going to happen. And now we're here. <laughs> this is the power of... This is the power of fuck you, basically. <laughs> this is the power of I'm going to do this, and I don't care at all what you have to say about it. Which I think is just cool. Like, I think it's just really cool that's being done. And I'm excited to see where it goes. 